Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. And today, I want to dive into a deep, up-close look at the Eagles 2021, not only unrestricted free agents, but cap space as well. This is your first video, really, into the new offseason for the Eagles in 2021 to get you set for what the Eagles are going to have to do to not only possibly re-sign people, let people go, and then, of course, how much cap space they have to do all of these moves. As we know, and as we have said, 13 unrestricted free agents. There are a couple other restricted free agents, more on that here in just a little bit, but you have a decent amount of players who you must now decide, can you re-sign? Will you re-sign? Do you want to re-sign? As we know, Philadelphia's cap space is atrocious. I mean, minus 52.29 million in cap space right now. It's it's bad. I mean, the Eagles literally have no money. They got to let people go. They will make cuts. We expect that. We'll do a video on cuts here in the next couple of weeks, but at least they do have probably 10 draft picks based on compensatory picks, which means Philadelphia can make some moves in the draft and hopefully get players who can be impactful guys on day one to fill what will be a roster that's going to have holes after the free agency. I mean, this is not going to be a roster that goes out and signs a bunch of people. It'll be a roster that hopefully restructures contracts, potentially brings back some players, but overall, it's a lot of people go. As you see on your screen, obviously, the lowest cap spaces in the NFL, the worst situations right there at number two is Philadelphia. The Saints of the worst spot. Obviously, the Drew Brees, is, 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 they went all in for him. It's been a mess. It didn't work out. And now you have, of course, Philadelphia at minus 52.29. Atlanta in trouble. Packers and Rams as well. The thing you'll notice is that all these football teams are playoff teams, minus the Falcons and the Eagles, and both of those teams have a lot of work to do. I'll ask you guys this first, though. Most important Eagle free agent. Who's the most important free agent Eagle right now who the Eagles could resign or let go? Let me know who that is down below. There'll be a pinned comment. I'll reply to the pinned comment. You'll see it you know, pinned right at the very top somewhere down here. But give me your name for the Eagles. Most important uh, free agent they need to go ahead and resign internally before, of course, looking to the draft and looking outside of the draft. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed, though, because as the cuts come, which we'll do a video on later, we have plenty of great overall videos upcoming here at Philadelphia Eagles now. But we will cover cuts and trades and draft picks and everything else going on. Coaching changes, potentially Essentially, as we know right now in Philadelphia, it'll all be covered here on Philadelphia Eagles now. So make sure you guys are subscribed by clicking the bigger subscribe button down below. Okay, so of course, as I said, 2021 NFL free agents will start with the unrestricted ones and of course the most expensive free agents that were based on what they were paid in 2020 and then work our way down. So it's kind of like most important to least important. Here are your first five. Jason Peters, Jalen Mills, Nate Sudfeld, Nikhil Roby Coleman, and Vinny Curry. Before I get into Jason Peters quickly, Curry, just to glance on this, they're not going to re-sign him. They're for sure going to let Vinny Curry go. They want to get younger. <coughs> Excuse me at defensive end. Most importantly, though, is Jason Peters. As we talked about in a video yesterday, Peters wants to come back for his 18th year. He says he wants to play in Philly, but doesn't expect to come back in Philadelphia. This is a big chunk of money, $4.05 million that the Eagles can, can let go. I mean, they're not going to re-sign him. There's no way they re-sign him. And the main reason is because, as you see, Jordan Mylotta and Andre Dillard, two young, very, very exciting left tackles. They're going to compete for the left tackle job in the offseason. Pro Football Focus had Jordan Mylotta as the Eagles' breakout candidate for 2021. I agree. He was great this year. Obviously, never playing football, never starting, and then getting thrusted in there. I am all for Mylotta winning out the job, unless Dillard is better, which we'll see from a first-round draft pick. But it's very clear that Peters is going to be let go. I'm totally fine with that. Jalen Mills is, I'd say, wild card. I think that you could... Make the case for re-signing Jalen Mills, maybe moving him back to cornerback. They did that a couple of games when they were obviously injured at the cornerback spot over this year. But I would, again, would not be surprised if Mills has played his final game in Philadelphia. The move to safety was a gamble. Didn't play out very well. He wasn't great as a safety. I think he he had some some moments, but he filled the shoes of Malcolm Jenkins. He's just not going to have a really good shot at that. And So I would see Mills, obviously most likely being let go, but that's obviously, if it's a cheaper deal, if they can re-sign him for a decent team-friendly price, then maybe you go ahead and bring him back potentially at corner. Right now, though, you got Kayvon Wallace back there. I think Kayvon Wallace is, at least should be in competition for a starting safety spot. McLeod comes back, and I think that's a good young, even though McLeod's a little bit older, but still a young backside of the secondary minus Jalen Mills. I'll let you guys pick one, though. If you had to pick one to re-sign Mills or Peters, type P down below for Peters, type M down below for for Jalen Mills. Okay, also Nate Sudfield was on that list. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. He dressed and played in the controversial final Week 17 game against the Washington football team. We all remember how uh, controversial it was, even though it wasn't. Here's the deal. If Sudfield, uh, Sudfield will stay, if Carson Wentz goes. We'll talk about Carson Wentz trade stuff, I'm sure, in the next couple of days, weeks, months, whenever he officially is let go. But if, if Wentz stays, then you have two quarterbacks. Hurts is the backup. You don't need to pay Nate Sudfield three or four million dollars to be the third string who doesn't even dress like they did this year. Bad move, Howie Roseman. However, if Carson Wentz were to be traded, you need a good backup. And I'm telling you, the Eagle coaches love Nate Sudfeld. They have all said he's a future starter in the National Football League. He might not be true, but I think Sudfeld's one of the better backups in the league, and he will stay 
if Wentz is let go, which is, you know, still a massive if and a big thing we got to keep an eye on here in the Philadelphia Eagles 2021 offseason. Before we keep going, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter. You guys follow me on Twitter. I have a Twitter. I tweet a lot. Okay, we're trying to get the 3,000 subscribers or followers on Twitter. So go ahead and go to my personal Twitter account at Real Thomas Mott. Give me a follow and tweet me. You can tweet at me. You can DM me. I'll most likely respond. You guys got some good questions there regarding the Eagles. Next batch, Hassan Ridgeway, Gravon LeBlanc, Richard Rodgers, T.Y. McGill, and Duke Riley. A couple of thoughts overall. Ridgeway, they, 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 they like him. They would like to re-sign him, but what will the price be? I think LeBlanc is absolutely gone. More on that in a second. R Richard Rodgers, you could bring him back, although he's kind of up there in age. We'll have to see what they do with Zach Ertz. And then McGill and Duke Riley. As far as Duke Riley goes, this is a guy they expected and wanted to, you know, rotate in there at the uh, linebacker spot and had some opportunities, you know, 13 games. He was good. He had a good interception there in whatever game that was, the Browns game, or maybe it was the game before. It was like the linebacker had to pick, and they – might have been the Saints game. This is a Saints game. I remember what one. He did not have the interception, though. This is a, a an option at linebacker that is going to be a very interesting option overall at the linebacker spot because Philadelphia has a lot of unrestricted and restricted free agents at linebacker. They're very young but they need to get better. So depending on what they want to do at linebacker, we'll probably determine Duke Riley's status. But if anything, he signed him and he's a backup or at least a special teams guy. He was cheap this past year and didn't do much in terms of guaranteeing that he deserves a big contract. Just like I don't think Alex Singleton did anything or Nathan Gary we'll talk about a little bit later. They have some more uh, unrestricted and um, team-restricted free agents who, will, of course, like Alex Singleton, can uh, get the exclusive rights to re-sign him first. But right now the linebacking spot is... Is, is very iffy. I think TJ Edwards is probably the only lock there, along with Sean Bradley, because, of course, he's a rookie. But the linebacking spot is going to be very interesting. And finally, Craven LeBlanc, who was, you know, at one point, the hero in 2018. The pick of Drew Brees in the divisional round game played very, very well against Michael Thomas in that game. He had a high ankle sprain. He only started in one game. You could bring him back for cheap, but... And they're going to try to retool at the cornerback spot, maybe in the draft, maybe in the offseason. And I don't think LeBlanc's going to be a part of that because he was you know, kind of iffy overall and has been a very mediocre cornerback. For the Philadelphia Eagles. As you guys this, so bring back Cravon LeBlanc. Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Before we keep going, uh, I want to get you guys up to date on my picks for the weekend with our friends at BetUS. Go to chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet. Use the promo code Eagles125 for 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. And if you listen to me like you did last week, you're going to win some money. As I was 3-0 in all my divisional round picks. And this time I'm going with the Packers over the Bucks. Give me the Chiefs over the Bills. I think Mahomes plays and plays well. And then, of course, my Packers-Chiefs Super Bowl matchup. Plus 120 right now. Good bet right there to win some money at the same time. You guys have any betting questions or just any questions in general, email us, eagles at chatsports.com. We'll get you set up. If you have any, you know, bet US questions or just betting questions in general, that's the email to go ahead and reach out. And the guys with Chat Sports will get you guys uh, answered with those questions and set up to hopefully win some money as the NFL season is almost over. But you got NBA and baseball, so you keep betting on stuff. You're good to go. Okay, more free agents here. Let's go to Corey Clement, Jonathan Ford, Josh Perkins, and Nate Gary. We'll start, of course, with Corey Clement, who was signed on late. You know, he wasn't really supposed to be there because they were trying to look at Devontae Freeman. They said, okay, we'll bring back the guy who was the hero, Super Bowl 52. I mean, for real, he was really good in that game. This year, he just didn't even play. 21 carries, 75 yards, one touchdown. Like, they just didn't even use him. He is no longer this great power third string back who can break him, you know, like he did catch the ball in the backfield in the Super Bowl. Not at all. He will be let go. But you have to ask yourself, who's going to be that backup running back in 2021? Because Boston Scott, as we'll see, is a restricted free agent, meaning potentially he could leave if another team were to offer him a better overall deal. Of course, Sanders is one. He needs somebody at number two. I don't think Josh Huntley is. Jason Huntley is the answer. I think Clement's going to be let go. So a running back is not... It's not a big need right now, but I think you could make the case that you could use another one maybe later on in the draft to be that second punch to the, uh, obviously, number one horse in the race right now, which is Miles Sanders. Drop a like. You guys agree the Eagles could use another running back. If Scott comes back, then I'm fine. Scott, obviously, has been great uh, filling in for Sanders the past couple of years. I would like him to stay. If he doesn't, along with Clement, I think they could use another running back. Drop a like if you guys agree. In terms of Nathan Gary, he was supposed to be kind of the, the linebacker this year, right? He's going to be the inside linebacker. He's going to start. He's going to be really great. And then he went on IR in October with that ankle injury and... Never never did anything to make me go, okay, yeah, Nathan Gary is the future at linebacker. And he comes back, maybe re-sign him on the cheap. I'm fine with that. And I'm in the mix of the linebacker competition, but I think the Eagles need to 
put a bigger emphasis on linebacker this offseason, as I have said, and maybe they do that at number six overall with Penn State linebacker Micah Parsons, who people, I can't even honestly agree, might be the best defensive player in the draft overall. Some other uh, free agents here. These are like your restricted guys, your, of course, uh, uh, ERFAs, your RFAs. Cameron Johnson, the punter, I'd bring him back. I think one of the better punters in the league, and he's cheap. Jason Kroom, gone. Boston Scott, again, we mentioned, question mark there. Alex Singleton, uh, he's exclusive rights free agent, so the Eagles have the rights to him. you got to match that offer overall. And then Greg Ward as well. Quickly here on Ward, he, he's so cheap. He only made half a million dollars last year, which is crazy. But for being the Eagles, one of the most reliable weapons on the outside, which is really dumb to say, but it's true because they have nobody else. He is uh, someone I think you've got to absolutely get the ex obviously have the exclusive rights to and try and re-sign because he's consistent, reliable, and has worked hard. They need to upgrade at wide receiver, and it's not like Greg Ward is the answer at that spot. But they got to do something, I think, in order to, to keep Ward as a, another option there because as we see the, at the depth chart, Jackson might be cut just based on, 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 on money. Fulgham disappeared in the second half. Rager needs to actually prove that he was worth the number on uh, a first-round draft pick. Ward is there. Watkins, Hightower, Wildcards. I think a wide side is, is nothing. Deontay Burnett is a good practice squad guy. That's it. And what do you get with Marquise Goodwin? I don't even know. He didn't even play last year. So as we keep saying, you want to add wide receivers into this mix. If you have like a Jalen Rager, Tra Travis Fulgham, Greg Ward, Devontae uh, Adam, uh, excuse me, Devontae Smith, a foursome at wide receiver, that's great and that's exciting, but they need to make some decisions here, and Greg Ward being a restricted uh, 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 exclusive rights free agent will, I think, make things a little bit more interesting, but I would see them resigning him as well. I ask you guys this, who is the number one Eagles player they should resign? Now, again, not, not a ton of big names in free agency this year for Philadelphia, but if there is somebody they need to resign, let me know who that is in the comment section. Again, the pinned comment down below. And also, make sure to follow me on Twitter again, at RealThomasMott. Make sure you guys are, are we got 15,000 subscribers, and only have like 3,000 Twitter followers. So go follow me if you're subscribed here because we tweet a bunch of Eagle stuff on my own personal, I do, on my own personal Twitter feed as well. At Real Thomas Mott is the place to go. All time after today here on Philadelphia Eagles Now, a great start video for the offseason, right? Here is what we have to work with and what we're going to lose and what draft picks we have. And then we'll grow from here and do a lot more videos here as well. So stay tuned on the channel for that. All time after today on Philadelphia Eagles Now, I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.